Hey, this is uh, Jonathan at the Saltwater Edge. Uh, today I'm gonna be talking about light tackle tog jigging, specifically in uh, pretty shallow water. And um, I'm mostly gonna be focusing on uh, doing it out of a kayak, but that's not to say that you can't do it off of a dock, off of a bridge, um, anywhere where there's uh, structure, there's gonna be tog this time of year. Um, there's still stripers around, um, but I really just wanted a change of pace because the Albies were not cooperating for me and I really just wanted to bend a rod so um, I launched the kayak and did some togging recently. The first thing I'm going to be talking about is the uh, tog jigs that I've been using. Um, everything I've been using is one ounce or less just because I've been targeting water that's like 15 feet or less. Um, I've got a few in here that are Back Bay, some uh, Wunker City, Joe Bags, just a different variety. Um, you want to have uh, different size hooks, um, not necessarily uh, different colors, um, just because they're usually keyed in on the, uh, the scent, the bait. Um, I've been using uh, cut green crabs, and uh, I've also been tipping it with uh, Fish Bites Easy Crab. It's a great product, it stays on the hook really well. Um, and it also buys a few extra bites. Um, I've definitely had a lot of instances where I can feel that there's just a little bit of shell left on the jig, but because there's still scent, I'm still getting bites, I'm still landing fish. For the crabs, you also wanna have a pair of scissors so you can cut the legs off, and also so you can cut them in half, peel the shell off, or leave it on, um, whatever your preference is. Um, usually if you're getting picked off a little too early um, before you can get a good hook set, you want to uh, leave the shell on just so, to buy a little more time. If you are uh, planning on keeping fish, you want to have a way of uh, measuring them. Um, I wouldn't really recommend using a uh, loose like tape just because it can be hard to uh, get a good clear measurement. So I have a solid bump board style, just so you can get the lip of the tog right up against it and see where the tail is. Make sure you have a legal fish. For releasing the fish, I've just been rocking a pair of pliers, um, but I would recommend using a D hooker, such as this one. Um, since you're using single hooks with the jigs, it's a lot easier to just hook it into the hook, pull the line down, and just pull up and pop the fish back into the water. You're gonna be catching a lot of shorts um, I've been catching dozens and dozens of shorts for every keeper, um, but it's still fun. You know, they bend the rod. It's consistent action. If it's a, a colder day or a windy day or a choppy day, it's nice to have bibs, nice to have a jacket as well. It is getting late into the season, put a beanie on. Um, it's getting pretty chilly out there, but that really gets the tog chewing. For leader, I've just been using uh, Seaguar Inshore 30 pound. Um, I haven't really been running a swivel just because I haven't really felt the need, but if you are uh, fishing water that's a little bit deeper, um, you might want to use one just because as the jig's dropping down and the uh, crab chunk on it just kind of makes it like helicopter down, that can twist your line up a bit. For a setup for shallow water togging, um, I really like using a spinning rod. Um, you can use a bait cast setup, which I've been doing a little bit, but uh, I just prefer spinning. Um, it's got like a little more sensitivity and you can just feel the bites a little bit better. Um, the setup I've been using is a six foot Tsunami Slim Wave and a uh, Pen Clash 2 2500, 20 pound braid. Um, this seems a little light and for some instances it is like if you're out a little bit deeper You might be a little undergunned if you hook a nice size tog, but for all the shorts and uh, The fish that are like just above keeper size. It's a really fun rod. They really put a bend in it It's got a really f sensitive moderate action but plenty of backbone in the back. I've landed 30 inch stripers um, and pretty heavy current with this setup um, the line was a little bit heavier at the time, but the reason you want 10 pound is you want it to reach the bottom and uh, just have minimal drag from the water uh, against the line. This setup uh, we don't have in the shop, um, but as an alternative, I have a uh, Stratic 3K here. 
great reel. We all love it. Paired with a uh, GCX inshore. Um, the reason I picked this one out is just because it has more of a uh, moderate action tip. I really like to be able to feel those bites and uh, you want to wait for all those little pecks to pass by and you want to wait till you feel that jig lift up off the bottom and that's when you want to set the hook really hard. So uh, that's a breakdown of uh, shallow water tog jigging. Um, get out there, catch a few, bring the cooler, bring ice. There's keepers out there. You'll have to work for them, but it's a really fun time. Get a rod bent. Um, it was a really nice uh, change of pace from a lot of the fishing I've been doing. Um, I've been spending a lot of time out on the jetties targeting hardtails and just have been a little bit disappointing this year. Um, it's also a nice change of pace from the striper fishing I've been doing just because I'm so used to carrying around a big plug bag just stuffed to the gills and uh, hiking down the beach finding spots whereas this is just a lot more um, low-key a lot less gear um, I've just been going out with a bucket of crabs and uh, just the gear on this table pretty much and um, having a lot of fun doing it um, so that's a little rundown of uh, light tackle, shallow water tog jigging. Um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the shop. If you like it, feel free to like the video, comment down below, catch them up.